All right, thank you very much. Welcome back. We're here for our next session. Tom Calloway from the Open Source and Standards Group will be talking about modern code on CentOS developer tool set. So take it away, Tom. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to me talk. And uh, let's get into it. So let's talk about what's wrong with OS on our end. There's, there's nothing wrong with the CentOS tool chain. Let's put that up off front. Uh, as long as we're thinking about things being in the time scale of when it was released, which was 2015. Uh, GCC 485 uh, came out roughly in the window of time in which CentOS 7 was coming out. So right at that moment, it was a good, reliable, current compiler tool chain. Unfortunately, it is not 2015 anymore. And uh, so there are some things that are a little bit hard to build with the version of GCC that CentOS 7 shipped. So I'm going to talk through an example that is uh, specific to me. I am the Chromium maintainer in Fedora. Uh, and as part of that, uh, there were a number of RHEL and CentOS users who said, hey, we would really enjoy it if we could get Chromium built for our platforms as well. Uh, and I said, sure, that shouldn't be hard. And then I started to delve into it. Uh, and it got a little more complicated than that. So uh, Chromium Upstream is nice enough to publish a guide uh, on a lot of different things. But on one specific area, they talk about the language features that they use inside their code base. And they do this because there's a lot of people that work on Chromium. It's not just a one or a two person project. Uh, estimates are that Google has three to four digits worth of people who work full time and do nothing but Chromium. And so they have to document a lot of these things from a style guide perspective, from a language perspective, so that they can sort of control the madness. And so they have a page that documents the C++11 and 14 use in Chromium. Uh, and it says you, you can use these feature functionalities. You can't use these. We don't want these included. We decided we don't like them. We decided this is a simpler way of doing these sorts of things. And so this, this page goes on and on and on and on. I don't have it all up here. I'm not going to read it to you in these slides. You can go and check it out if you want. Uh, but <coughs> as far as C++11 is concerned, the compiler that we've got in CentOS 7 <coughs> is good enough. Uh, we have all the features necessary to do full C++11 compliance. There are some weird corner cases in that where minor bugs were fixed in C++11 features, but as far as the broad cases are concerned, everything you need is there. Now, but for C++14, that's not quite the case. Uh, None of the core features were implemented in uh, GCC 485. Uh, a lot of them showed up in 49, the rest of them showed up in V5. Uh, and in fact, it's actually default in V6. Now, it's important to remember that GCC 8 just landed. So uh, GCC is a relatively fast moving compiler target. So there's a lot of things that are going in that space. Uh, so, when pointed out this problem, I went to Upstream and said, hey, you know, uh, it appears that I can't actually build your code against, you know, the current release uh, inside the RHEL and the CentOS environments. And they said, I don't care. Uh, well, to be fair, the argument was a little more nuanced than that. It was, uh, it was more like this. Um, and, and to be specific about what I mean by this is that they said, well, we don't really build with GCC anyways. If it happens to build with GCC, that's good for you. What we use is CLang LLVM. And I said, well, that really doesn't help me because we don't have that in the CentOS environment at all. And so I could start looking into building that, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's a road to severe drinking. And uh, so uh, they said, you know what? We actually uh, don't even recommend that you use the, the operating system version of, of CLang. And I said, okay, what do you recommend? And they well, said, well, we actually have been you know, doing all of our builds with CLang from master, uh, like nightly checkouts. And I was like, so I just have to go check out nightly CLang, build that on you know, a four-year-old distribution, and, uh, and things are going to work. And they were like, well, no, you need to use our nightly checkouts. It turns out they forked CLang at some point and we're fixing bugs or adding features because when you have several hundred people, that seems like a good idea. Uh, but for, you know, 
they were they pretty much say, you know, this is how we, we really expect people to build this code. And I said, you know, this is this is really concerning to me because I, I really don't think I'm gonna be able to pull this off. And they said, well, you know, this aging problem is not our problem, is what Upstream said. They said that we're not interested in trying to build for old things. And I said, well, okay, all right, I, I hear that. Uh, and they're like, well, we, you know, you could just do what we told everybody else that had this problem to do, namely Debian. And, and I said, oh, what did you tell them to do? And they said, well, we have a pre-built version of our compiler you can just use. We actually shipped that in the source tarball. Now, <laughs> I don't know how much trust you inherently have in Google, uh, but at this point, I, I felt like maybe I shouldn't be using their pre-built binaries. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, uh, so I, I politely declined that offer, uh, although I do believe this is how a couple of the upstream Linuxes are actually building, uh, they're using uh, Google's pre-built binary compiler in order to build Google's browser. Uh, eventually it'll all be Google and we won't have any But you know, in, in the interim I said, you know what, I really still would like to try and use a compiler that I have either built myself or I trust the people who have built it and I can, if I do not trust them at any point, can go and reproduce that build and then use that reproducible build. So, I started investigating and discovered DevToolset. I was aware of DevToolset, but I hadn't really ever used it. So it was one of those things that I knew was in the ether, but I had never tried. So, uh, it has modern enough features to build Chromium, usually. Chromium has a lot of LLVMisms built inside of its code base where they do things like don't include CMath, uh, headers because somewhere in the OLVM tool chain it will actually drag those headers in automatically and Google figured that out and so they told people in their style guide don't bother including the CMath header because you don't really need it. <laughs> I, again, I, I, sometimes I can't get into their mindset. Uh, so DevToolset is something that was created by Red Hat originally um, but it's built for CentOS by the CentOS community. Uh, it supports x86-64, AR-64, PPC-64 LE. Um, and what it is, is it's a collection of open source packages uh, around comp compilation and development. Specifically so that you can get newer versions of debuggers and compilers and all sorts of fun tools like System Tap and Valgrind and No Profile. It also includes Docker files, so that you can take all of these things and inject them directly into containers. So if you're already in the world of tomorrow and you're using containers, then this is a really easy way to start using those into containers. <clears throat> now, it works using this uh, framework called Software Collections. And so Software Collections are kind of magic RPM packages that are designed to be parallel installable uh, without conflicting or replacing everything in your environment. So the nice thing about this is that you can install these packages and they're going to drop into slash op slash rh and uh, into a directory underneath there, and then they're never going to conflict with any of the libraries or the binaries or anything on your system. So you can have the dev tool set GCC and the system GCC, and they both live in harmony. Uh, it uses this wrapper script called SCL, and that allows it to load the uh, software collection into the runtime environment only when you tell it to. So basically, uh, it's, it's a sort of a reinvention of the wheel of how Unix has been doing namespace stuff for a really long time, but it works pretty well, and it doesn't break very often, and so as far as that's concerned, it's a straightforward thing to do. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty good about uh, providing you just the tools you need to do the job and nothing more. So, installing it on CentOS 7 is very straightforward. Uh, you have to have the CentOS uh, SCL uh, package installed. I believe it's CentOS-SCL-RH. You install that. It enables the uh, repo that's out there as part of the CentOS ecosystem. Uh, it's not a third-party repo. It's just not one that's turned on unless you install that package. And then from there, you just install the dev toolset packages that you want. Now, there have been seven releases of dev toolset, seven being the most current. Uh, and for Chromium, I happen to know that I need the toolchain plus I need Libatomic because Chromium is special. Uh, and wants to link against Libatomic specifically. Lots of other uh, software doesn't need to do this in order to comply. Uh, so I go ahead, you go ahead and you install that. 
Um, and you can confirm that the install was successful by running uh, an SEL query command. So what we have here is we've got two indications of GCC-V. The one on top is uh, with the SEL enabled dev toolset wrapper around it. Basically what I'm using is I'm using the SEL command to tell me to invoke that inside of the uh, software collection for the dev toolset. And you can see that the version that we're getting here is 721, uh, as opposed to the system copy, which is 485. Uh, both of them are intact and they're not touching on each other at all. And then what I want to do is go ahead and add it to the spec file for Chromium. So it's very really straightforward to do this. Uh, since we're conditionalizing around uh, RHEL and CentOS 7, uh, using this tagging, and then you just add your build requires like you would for any other package. And then before you start doing anything in the environment that's gonna need to detect the tool chain, you just basically call this enable script. You source it like you would source any sort of other environmental variable uh, setup, and in the shell, uh, it immediately enables that and sets those as the default for all of those cases. And what that means is that any of the compilers or binaries or libraries that exist inside that software collection are going to become the primary ones on your system. So that means that when Chromium immediately starts to do its uh, configuration down here with the bootstrap and the GM, uh, it will detect the GCC and the libraries from the dev tool set. And that's it. It, it's really that simple. And so uh, I expected it to be a lot harder <laughs> than it was, to be honest. I expected there to be a lot more complexity in the mix, but uh, what the dev toolset does is extremely streamlined. It puts things together very cleanly, and because it's overriding all the environment variables in the shell, uh, it's not even aware that it's been monkeyed with. There's no special flags you have to pass to any of your code. You just need to ensure that it's actually looking for GCC. Now obviously if you wanted to, you could go through and hard code pathing in there, but the SEL wrapper makes it much simpler to just simply do it the way that they intend. Now, if you build something that ends up having a runtime dependency on something inside of the dev toolset environment, then you can't run it outside of that. It should be a no-brainer to have to say that, but it's worth saying out loud. If one of the libraries inside there became uh, dynamically loaded or was you know, shared and linked against a binary inside of there, then you wouldn't be able to run this on a standard CentOS 7 system because it wouldn't work without that dev environment being active and live. Now you could say, well, this is requires, but then you'd have to have everybody invoke it with the SCL wrapper every single time they did that, and that's non-optimal. Now you could work around that if you link statically or other things, but the best case is just sort of to understand if you're linking to these sorts of things, you need to be aware that that will trickle down to all of the users that encounter it. Uh, sometimes the system copy will work in these sorts of cases where, because they have the same uh, shared object name, even down to the version, but they're not compatible between the two, there's slight differences in behavior, this isn't how it's supposed to work with Unix ABI, but we all know that doesn't always hold true in practice. Um, usually this will fail or just give really weird errors and you'll end up trying to debug something that was never intended to work in the first place. But because we're talking about the compiler here, the compiler goes to great lengths to minimize the, the risk of this actually being in practice. Uh, I can't speak to LLVM and CLang. I imagine they do the same thing, but as far as GCC is concerned, GCC mostly just compiles the thing and gets out of the way so that you can then take that binary and move it around without having to worry about the versioning of the shared object library. Uh, but as you are developing with this set, you need to be careful that you don't run that enable command that I used inside the spec in your shell because all of a sudden when you've done that, there's no indication in the shell that things have changed. It's not like when you uh, drop into a different Python environment and you're using some code there and it, it's clearly indicated with a visual indicator that you are inside of a different environment, there isn't anything for this. It won't tell you that. And so you could easily do that, come back three hours later after you've had lunch, start hacking some code, discover that everything is compiling, great, build, ship it. You want to be careful. You don't want to make that mistake. Um, so. In the near future, uh, it is very likely that there will be a new dev tool set with GCC 7.3 or 8, specifically because of Spectre Variant 2, uh, because there are changes that went into that, specifically all the repo line stuff, 
the kernel stuff's already landed, the GCC stuff has landed in 7.3 and 8, and since people will almost certainly want their boxes to not be the most Swiss cheese ever, uh, they're going to want to start building with these stacks, and so I fully anticipate that Red Hat will do that. I have no inside knowledge as to when that will be, or how it will come out, or any of those things, but I think that's sort of an obvious thing they're going to want to do. And this is the best part, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is actually coming to the Epo build route as a thing that, that packages can build against. So that what this is going to mean is that a lot of uh, existing packages in Fedora that couldn't be built in Epo because of the age of the compiler can now be easily and trivially conditionalized and built. Uh, so uh, there's been a thread on this for about two months now. Uh, and about 20 minutes ago, uh, the EPL uh, folks committed the change to add the CentOS SCL repository to the mock configs for the EPL build route. So when that actually slides right in and goes into the live deployment, which I don't know how long that will take, uh, then people will be able to build a lot more packages for the CentOS environment. So uh, that's a pretty big and exciting announcement. So hopefully everybody realizes how simple it is to sort of use this in the scope of what I'm talking about. And uh, the, the nice thing is, is that it will mean uh, Chromium and other things for CentOS 7. Any questions? So just, uh, uh, so currently it's to uh, enable the collection inside the build section, right? You need to enable it before the software is configured to identify which GCC it's using. Okay. So, do you think some wrapper that would, be, for example, install an additional package that would be specified as a build environment would be handful, like in this case, like that you, you, you would just avoid this enable thing, like it would be basically, uh, 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 the collection would be enabled by default when this package is installed, and just thinking now to make it more simpler. Sure, um, that's a possibility. Uh, your question was, is there a possibility of taking it, making it simple? Right. Uh, and I think that the, the complication there is that in this environment, we're talking about one set of software collection. Uh, that's all designed to work really well with each other, but there's a lot of other software collections that are in the repo, and if they all auto-enabled at the same time, it could get confusing because those are designed to be parallel installable, so it could be a case where there might be, at some point, two versions of GCC that are living inside of that, and if they both enable, which one did you get? Did you get the one you intended to get? Did you get the last one? That behavior is not necessarily predictable, so I think it's easier, given that it's just a one-line invocation, to simply document you put this before you inv invocate uh, configure usually. Chromium is special and can't use configure, but most things will. So three questions. One, is this available for CentOS 6? Two, is Golang included in the GCC 7 compiler? And three, can we use this in um, CBS builds for, for the six? Okay, so uh, it is in it is in six. Uh, GoLang support is included, and you can use it in CPS builds for the six. So yes, yes, yes. Just a note on the ABI compatibility, since you mentioned, since I use this quite often, uh, GCC more or less from version three to five or something like that is has compatible ABI. So you can simply use the that tool set seven and it is the four point eight library. This is very important if you have proprietary software that you can uh, libraries which you can forbid. So even if it sounds maybe risky, it's actually seems to work very fine. So you can link with very very new code and use all the new features uh, and link it against very old libraries which you can forbid. So just a side note that uh, this is also something that can be Agreed, understood, and I think that's important to know because GCC is very good and very careful about this, but other libraries that are in the same uh, software collection aren't. For example, Valgrind. Valgrind does not have the same reputation for stability in ABI and doesn't do the, the most thorough job of versioning, at least historically. I'm not trying to throw anyone under any buses, 
but it's worth being careful with that and ensuring that the behavior is consistent between the one that's in the system and one that's in the library, especially if you're going to not require the end user to have the software collection installed on their system as well. Just one, okay, you said you uh, can't influence uh, maybe what is inside the, the tool set, but it would be interesting if also things like tools could be inside. Because at the moment, uh, you said there are a few tools, uh, while trying the space and so on. But for example, having a, a lead boost uh, on CentOS is archive to be kind, let's say, it would be nice if also this kind of tools would be provided, which at the moment are not as far as I know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, but I, I know. Influence whatsoever. So yes, yeah. Maybe if everybody says it. <laughs> that, that would be that would be nice. I think that what they would say is that it probably a uh, boost is, is big enough that it probably deserves to live in its own. Yeah, I agree. Well, all right. Well, okay. More. Go ahead. Uh, just a comment about boost. I, I think that boost includes the version in the Selenium, so it should be probably just enough to have the. Boost as a compact library in the Apple, right? Maybe not. It, it, it should live in parallel uh, easily because this is completely. Yeah, yeah. So, this so it should be easy to ship a, a package with Boost, I suppose. But I mean, if it was ready, it would be easier. No, no, not to do it myself. No, I, I assure you. Uh, you know, at being the Chromium maintainer, I have so much spare time. I would love to take on parallelizing Boost into Equal, but no, I'm not going <laughs> to cheat. If anyone wants to take on that, that's on them. Not on me. All right, well, thank you very much. I will give you the remaining time back so that you can uh, relax or go get coffee early if you want. Thank you very much, Tom. So, housekeeping, we are... Uh...